Here is a complex example with pointers. Now we will try to create a two-dimensional array dynamically in runtime. If you want to take your rows and column numbers from the user as inputs, let's say using scanf, this is not possible. These indices should be defined before the compilation. If we say, for the sake of our example, let's say user has entered two rows, three columns. User wanted to create a two-dimensional array with two rows and three columns. Remember how we have done it with one-dimensional array. We created a pointer, let's say here, we are defining a pointer first, then we are allocating a three integer space using malloc. Let's say we allocated it in here. We said malloc give me 12 bytes and we assigned the initial location of this array here to my pointer here so that I can use this as an array. Let's assume this is 604. The address of this integer is 604, this is 608, and this is 612. So my pointer will hold the starting location of this space, which is 604. So I created a one-dimensional array like this with three integers. And now I need another row. So think it like you are doing this multiple times with the same way. If I create another pointer here and I request 12 bytes of space one more time with the same procedure using malloc, let's say here, this is another row. So let's say the starting location of this row, these will be my rows, 412, 416, 420. And naturally I am assigning the return value of the start location of this space to my second pointer. So actually, this is a pointer to my second row. So think it like you are defining two separate rows. Each of it is a one-dimensional array. So all I need to do is to create a pointer array here with the size of rows that each pointer will hold the starting location of each rows. Think it like going one layer further. So before the compilation, I don't know how many pointers will there be in my array of pointers. This is also not defined. All I need to do is to define a single pointer, let's say P, to this array of pointers. So P will hold the starting location of this array of pointers. Let's say here is 300. So P will hold 300. Now think it backwards. I'm actually creating a pointer to another pointer that each pointer here will hold the starting location of the rows. These rows are physically not linear, but logically you can think them as two-dimensional arrays. So all I need to do is to define my P as pointer of pointer and give me how many rows will I need this much of times integer and cast it. So this way I'm creating my array of pointers. Then I will allocate these rows for each of these elements in my array of pointers. Now remember if I say p plus zero this means 300. Resolve 300 make the inside this. So the inside will be holding the return value of the starting location of my first row. So I need space c times 4 bytes because this will be my first row and cast it. With the same way p plus 1 if this is 300 this is 304 in other words it's here make it make the inside same way c times Four. This will be my second row. This will hold the initial location of my second row and cast it. Actually, I am allocating space for array of pointers here with the size of rows because each element will hold the starting location of each row. Then the first pointer here will be holding the starting location of my first row. And second pointer here will be holding the starting location of my second row. Now let's fill them up with values. If I say p plus 1, it means 300 plus 4, 304. I'm now here. If I resolve 304, I get 412. Now watch it. If I add 1 to 412, 
I get 416 here. This is 416. And if I resolve 416, now I'm here and make it, I don't know, something like 25. So I'm actually making the value here 25. So now, as you remember, this notation is same with this notation. This is the beautiful part. If you understand the arithmetic of pointers, you can use either this notation or this notation. And since I'm able to use the index notation now, I can fill all the elements inside the loop. Now let's see it on the actual code. Now let's try to implement the steps here as we have shown in our course. So consider we have two variables R and C which will be the amount of rows and columns. And you are taking it from the user using scanf, like this. And if we follow the steps shown here, I first need to define a pointer P here, which will be pointer to another pointer, as I have set my P here as pointer to another pointer. So I will allocate space with malloc row times four bytes or better, size of int and I'm casting it to be compatible with p and now p is showing the address of here the starting location of here so just like we did in our example here p plus 0 is 300 now I am at this address inside this address now I will allocate a three integer space and put the starting location in this address so I'm setting here with malloc function c times four bytes or size of int and I will set my second pointer here using p plus one in this case we are assuming that the user has entered two as rows and three as column amount after that we will put it into a loop to make it fully dynamic now we have allocated these rows this is my first row which is here in the picture and this is my second row which is here in the picture so let's fill them up now if you follow it from the picture here by p plus one i mean 304 this is 304 and if i resolve that address i get 412 and if i add 1 to 412 i get 416 this is 416 together and if i resolve that this is inside the 416 and make there 25 you are actually setting the second row second element of p to 25 both notations are the same these are the same so instead of using this address notation let's fill all the values let's fill all the elements here in our array with index notation as you can see by saying p00 you are actually jumping through the locations p00 is here p01 is here p02 is here p10 is here p11 is here and p12 is here and after that let's print our two-dimensional array within the loop so first i am defining i and j then for i equals zero i up to the two because i have two rows for now and i plus plus then i'm printing all the elements within the row for j equals zero j up to the three i have three column in each row j plus plus print the value to the screen after printing each line put a new line sign here so for now this will only work if you enter two and three as row and column numbers and now let's make it fully dynamic by putting these assignments into loops so here i will allocate space for each of these pointers within the loop and i'm saying for i equal to zero i up to the amount of row here entered by the user i plus plus and instead of this notation i'm using in this notation now and i'm also putting the assignments here into the loop for i equals to zero do it for each row i plus plus and for j equal to zero 
do it for each columns in the same row j plus plus and now all i have to do is to use the indices here p i j equal to let's say a counter variable which starts from zero and keeps filling the elements until the last element and let's define our counter here initially zero and in the printing part i'm changing this constant values with rows and columns so when i run the code you can give any number as the number of row and columns let's say four rows five columns and here is the result four rows five columns now let me re-explain the code one more time first i'm defining a pointer that is holding the starting location of pointer array here so every element here will be a pointer to each rows after then i'm allocating this much of space for each row and this many of rows within the loop so every element here is now pointing to my rows after that i am filling up all my elements all my integers in the rows using the indice notation then in my last part i'm just printing them to the screen as you can see we have created a two-dimensional dynamic array in runtime with changing size actually this was another use case of pointers and pointer arithmetics thanks for watching